Welcome to this video presentation about musculoskeletal ultrasound, taking physiotherapy to the next level. My name is Mark Schmitz, I'm a sonographist and I develop and teach musculoskeletal ultrasound courses in several countries to general practitioners, medical specialists and physiotherapists. I'm also a lecturer in anatomy and physiotherapy. I'm the founder of the anatomy and physiotherapy website where the latest evidence-based information about anatomy and physiotherapy is posted on almost a daily basis, high quality and spam free. Please like us. I advise you to see part one, the introduction in musculoskeletal ultrasound, in short MSU, before seeing this very interesting part two, diagnostic MSU in physiotherapy. Diagnostic MSU in physiotherapy, which is very normal in the Netherlands, is not something common. Some countries have rules and regulations that prohibit this, and these should be followed at all times. Still, diagnostic MSU in physiotherapy can be used for lots of reasons. I will explain these reasons one by one by using real patient cases combined with their MSU scan showing the pathologies. I can show you hundreds of different anatomical structures and even more pathologies, but I decided to keep it clear and simple. Let's focus, as an example, only at several normal everyday pathologies of the supraspinatus tendon. On this slide, a healthy transfer supraspinatus is presented. Please memorize this picture. An accurate diagnosis is not that simple due to the complexity of the anatomy and biomechanics of the human body. High quality research shows that in plenty of cases the diagnostic accuracy of the physical examination we do in physiotherapy is limited. Currently, almost without exception, there is a lack of clarity with regard to whether common orthopedic special tests used in clinical examination are useful in differentially diagnosing pathologies. And, if a test is true positive, then still there is a lot of unclarity about the specifics. Which pathology is exactly present? Are there even more pathologies simultaneously present? And in what degree? This is a supraspinatus of a 6 year old laborer with complaints since 2 months on the right side due to a probable partial tear with as a result the intratendinous swelling, hence the darker hypoechoic color and increased thickness of the tendon. The tendon is 9.8 mm. The normal average is 5 to 7 mm. Relatively, this is a big increase which influences the subacromial space with as a result a subacromial impingement. The left-sided complaints have been present since 2 years. An older partial tear seems to be repaired with fatty infiltration. This influences the loadability of the tendon and thus the training load we should apply. The bursa seems to be chronically irritated and the glenohumeral capsule appears to be swollen. All these specifics are important for clinical reasoning and completing the ICF framework. Is an anti-CAN test, a test with good diagnostic accuracy, capable in revealing all these specifics? Unfortunately not. MSU changed my view on physiotherapy. Now I know much better what I can treat and what I can't treat. My success rate has increased enormously because I only treat the patients which I can actually help. Knowing one's limitation is important in preventing false positives, false negatives, overloading the patient, overtreating and treating if there is no indication for physiotherapy. This patient had a lot of pain on both sides, left more than right. Big intratendinous calcifications can be seen. Of course, these calcifications are not the only cause of the pain, but they certainly interfere with the treatment. How successful would physiotherapy be in such a case? Patients will ask you how long it will take the complaint to heal. How sure are you about your answer? Maybe you rely on the connective tissue repair phases, but then you presume that the complaint can he heal totally. This is a young professional tennis player. He is right-handed and since two years having increasing problems with the surface. The MSU scan shows a partial tear 
which with training most likely will heal in about 6 to 8 months. The changes in the humeral head, however, are definite. These will probably affect the mobility permanently. Research suggests that interventions such as giving visual, verbal and written information can improve adherence to therapy and lead to a better understanding of the complaint. This increases patient satisfaction, results in a better treatment outcome and it prevents false expectations. This 60 year old lady has a full thickness tear. As you can see there is a supraspinatus missing on the right side. The supraspinatus tear compromised the stability with a superior migration of the humeral head as a result. Showing her the left-right comparison she completely understood that the goals she had, like returning to her sport, were not realistic and that she had to set other goals. Sometimes it's good to show patients that there is nothing wrong with the joint. That pain doesn't automatically mean that there is something wrong, torn, inflamed or affected. This can be a big help in for example people who are skeptic about the diagnosis or in chronic pain patients. Because three-dimensional anatomy and thinking is not that easy, all MSU courses I develop and teach are in collaboration with universities. The anatomy lab plays an important factor in my courses for training the 3D anatomy. Information about MSU courses in your country can be found by visiting these websites. People with for example a tendinopathy often have a too active coping strategy. It's important to change this into adequate coping behavior. This is a 42 year old carpenter with a too active coping strategy. The right side shows a big intratendinous swelling due to the inflammation process with a subacromial impingement as a result. Confronting the patient with the left-right comparison and informing that this could lead to more work influencing damage resulted in taking the complaint seriously. Evaluation is something every physiotherapist is required to do periodically. This is a scan I made of a patient at the beginning of treatment. Each month I assess the connective tissue repair of the partial tear which can be seen on the right side. Each month it improved and the training load could be adjusted to the new situation. After 9 months the partial tear was completely healed. The calcification however remained in location and size. When do we stop therapy? Which indicators do we use? Pain? Quality of life? Time? MSU can help a bit in this decision making. Here you can see the shoulder of a professional gymnast. After a 3 months training, a perfect supraspinatus quality can be seen on both sides. At the right side, a minor bursa sheet thickening can be seen. This results in a tiny friction with the chromium with active shoulder abduction. The patient was given advice and some exercises and we stopped treatment. This is the same patient. The small friction between bursa, sheet and the chromium can be seen while the patient makes an abduction movement. Health professionals need to possess more than just their clinical expertise if they are to meet the demands of the changing healthcare system. Pursuing evidence-based physiotherapy means applying clinometrics. Clinometric examples are questionnaires, using a goniometer, but also measuring with MSU. Click the pause button and study this flowchart closely before proceeding with the presentation. To me, Evidence-based physiotherapy is a combination of a good clinical examination and a MSU scan and applying clinometrics. Altogether, this can clarify every domain of the ICF framework. Diagnostic MSU training should come before training in RUSI. It's important to understand indications and contraindications for physiotherapy. Best is to have diagnostic MSU and RUSI skills. This will make the physiosonographist complete. I can set up tailor-made MSU courses for your country, company or educational institute. This video presentation has been approved by Anatomy and Physiotherapy. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.